You can make your own drop-down list in Designer by adding a new input parameter, choosing an integer 1, and choosing drop-down list from the option here. You will get two values here. One is the value that is returned um, from the parameter into the function that you are using this parameter. And the second one is the text that appears when you click on the drop-down list on your node later. The drop-down list has been used in a couple of ways in Designer. One of them is in the gradient linear one, which where you can uh, set the rotation angle based on a drop-down list menu. Another is the tile generator, where you can choose a set of pattern types in a drop-down list. The uh, rotation is done by a pixel processor. So if I connect the stripes to it, and make it grayscale and edit it. I can uh, fetch the. Um, I can go and fetch this input we made here right here. I can change the name of this actually. I can go back here and get integer because we made an integer. So this is where we will find it. There it is. DL drop list, that is the parameter that we made. So right now, this parameter returns the value zero, but I can add as many items as I want here. And I can use this checklist or checkbox icon here to select which uh, value, which you can find here, is returned to the function. So for now, I can set this to uh, one. So right now, the value one appears here. I'm going to set up a quick function and I will explain it in detail when it's finished. So what happens now is that the value that is returned through the parameter is converted to a float. I do this because the multiplication node requires that uh, the numbers that are multiplied with each other is the same uh, number type. So an integer is a whole number. It cannot have a decimal number, for instance, like 1.1 or 1.2. It has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. But a float is a decimal number, so I can have 1.1 or 1.2 for it, but it needs to be the same type when I multiply it. So I have to... So if I intend to multiply a number, it has to be, with a decimal number, it has to be able to hold a decimal itself. So right here, since we returned the value um, 1 here, the value 1 is passed into the multiplication, it, and it will attempt to multiply it with 0 and 1.0 is 0. So the number 0 is passed to rotation to the rotate position node. The uh, position basically fetches the uh, original position of each pixel that uh, you connected to the, uh, to the pixel processor node. So uh, what we're basically doing is getting the uh, position of, uh, for instance, this pixel up here, and we are rotating it around based on um, this node. The rotate position node rotates the uh, pixels, or I don't know if it's texels it works with, or pixels, but uh, it rotates the points on the texture uh, based on uh, the uh, value that this rotate position node is fed through this node. And this has to be between zero and one. If you're working with degrees at any time, you can find the degrees to turns. You can so if you're working with actually zero to three hundred and sixty degrees um, angles in numbers, you can connect it to this and connect it connect it to this again to get a uh, conversion to turn numbers, which is zero and one. If you go back to the parameter and increase the value to two. And go back into the pixel processor function. This value, this this uh, node is fed the value two, so I can now increase 
they value here. So let's get a calculator up. If I take the number two and multiply it with 0 0.125, I'll get the value 25. So if one turn is 360 degrees, then 0 0.25 would be uh, 90, 90 degrees, I believe. So as you can see, the uh, image here has been rotated. I can go back now and actually change this value here. If I put it back to 1, you can see it has rotated 45 degrees. Well, let's go back to the beginning. This is the original image. You can see this is the same right here. Because now we are not rotating anything. Because we are feeding the multiplication uh, node 0. Um, and 0 times something is still 0. If I feed it 1, one point uh, one times um, zero point one two five is zero point one two five, and if I feed it two, then two times zero point one two five equals one point two five. Zero point two five. Sorry. So that is uh, ninety degrees. This is forty five. And this is uh, 135. And you can go back and uh, rename this. So this is uh, 0 degrees. You can make a degree sign by, if you're using Windows, you can make a degree sign by holding Alt and pressing uh, 2, 4, 8 on your numpad. <clears throat> and this is 45 degrees. This is 90 degrees. This is 135 degrees. Oi. And this is 180. So when we publish this node later, we will get a drop down list, uh, drop down list like this one. And uh, we will be able to pick the rotation and we will know uh, what happens based on this text. This value is not visible in the drop-down list, this uh, text is. So we need to make sure that is uh, readable and understandable. The tile generator, where you can uh, select a pattern type, um, we can um, emulate this or we can do this as well by fetching a FX map, we can create scale, and edit it. And you can see, um, you can fetch the exact same pattern types right here in the FX map, because that is, I think this is the node within the um, tile generator node that is used to make these patterns. We can make a um, let's see what happens. Um, let's see what it actually works with in here. So let's make a constant value and enter the node here. You see, this is just it's just a integer as well, and it uses this integer uh, to change between the uh, pa uh, pattern types. So we can actually use a drop down list as well. We can go back and um, we can just use the same drop-down list, actually. So we can get the integer, which has our drop-down list um, here. We can actually just return it quite simply right from here. So that whatever value is in our drop-down list here is um, the value that is passed into the function right here and such it is passed back to the parameter that was under this pattern uh, list here. So now we can control the, um, the uh, pattern type from here. You can set these numbers to whatever you want. So if uh, you're actually making a node and you only want a certain type, uh, a couple of types of 
patterns to be available to choose between in the jotdown list. You can just uh, set this to whatever you want, like five and um, nine. I set it to eight actually. And uh, 12, for instance. So now you have three different, uh, three different, this is almost the same. Let's take that to 13. Three different pattern types to choose between. So now you can, uh, like this is a circle or something. I don't know. You can just go back into the FX map and find the actual name for it. I don't know. So, But I'm just going to call it something. So now when you publish uh, your graph, this structure list will be available on it, so you can change the pattern type. 